Welcome. I'm going to speak today about how to assess protection against infection and transmission after COVID-19 vaccination. So I really want to remind us at the start that we now have nine COVID-19 vaccines, which is quite an accomplishment this far into the pandemic. We have three that are authorized in the US, which are the top three, and then we have worldwide six more. Um, these vaccines are in various stages of being published, or some are only available in press release form. And I'll go over some of the design of these vaccines so I can talk about their protection from transmission and infection. Six of our vaccine candidates worldwide actually involve the spike protein. The spike protein is the protein that connects the virus to the host cell. And of those six candidates that involve the spike protein, five of them actually provide genetic material, either mRNA or DNA, that makes the body code for the spike protein. And one of them, the Novavax vaccine, actually involves injection of the spike protein with an adjuvant itself. The three other candidates are whole inactivated variants. So of those spike protein involved vaccines, we have the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines, which are both mRNA vaccines surrounded by a lipid nanoparticle. You get the mRNA and then your body produces the spike protein to raise an immune response. There are three adenovirus vaccines with DNA inside of them that codes for the spike protein. And those are the Johnson & Johnson product, the Sputnik V, and the AstraZeneca from Oxford. And then finally, the Novavax is actually the spike protein itself. The three vaccines that are whole inactivated variants are the Covaxin, the Sinopharm, and the Sinovac, um, which I'll talk about in a minute. Before we even think about how these protect us from infection, we have to remind ourselves what immune responses are elicited by these vaccines. First, B cell responses are elicited, which actually create antibodies. And then the second type of immune response is T cells. And T cells are actually our most enduring form of protection against viruses. And T cells can be divided into CD4 cells, which are helper cells, or CD8 cells, which are cytotoxic or killer cells. The important things about these trials is that they actually took the trouble to measure T cell immunity. And we know that all of our vaccine candidates give us both neutralizing antibody responses and strong T cell responses. This is a busy slide, but I wanna just orient you to this. The Moderna, Pfizer, and Johnson & Johnson are again the three authorized in the United States. Moderna and Pfizer being RNA, Johnson & Johnson being the one dose DNA with the adenovirus. But if you look at the fourth column, you can see that all the vaccine candidates in the clinical trials and also in their phase one, two designs measured both neutralizing antibody responses, often measured in macaque models, protection from reinfection, and also importantly measured that we had strong T cell responses that are elicited against all of these vaccines, mostly CD4 and CD8, um, exactly in the right proportion. Uh, if you look down the fifth column, those are really the people who got the vaccine in the clinical trials. So of course, equal, mostly equal got the placebo shot. And then that yellow column shows us, and this is really a feature of T cell immunity, that there was almost 100% protection in all the clinical trials from COVID-19 severe disease and hospitalization and death. Anyone who unfortunately had those severe outcomes from COVID-19 were in the placebo arm, the vaccines completely covered us from those severe outcomes of COVID-19. In the last two columns, you can see that there's more variability in protecting against mild disease across different variants with the different vaccine candidates, but severe disease was completely protected against. And these are the three inactivated whole uh, virion candidates, the Covaxin uh, pharmaceutical product, the Sinovac and the Sinopharm, Again, those are also all two doses. They all measured uh, CD4 cell or CD8 cell responses in their own way. And they also had 100% protection from severe disease. So the question is, do all vaccines work against the variants? And also do they work um, essentially, at least in terms of protection against severe disease against the variants? And the short answer is yes because the way to remember our T cell immunity response is that T cells protect us from severe disease. If your antibodies have waned against the vaccine, the virus may be able to get inside the nasal cavity and may cause 
mild infection there, runny nose, uh, loss of smell, other mild infections. But once the virus tries to get down to the lungs, our T cell response will protect us from severe disease. And it, it's important to remind ourselves how robust and in breadth the T cell response is against the vaccines. This is actually a paper that shows with natural infection, there's about 100 T cells that line up across the spike protein to protect you from reinfection. If you have variants which have at the most 13 or 14 mutations across the spike protein, having at least 100 T cells lining up across the spike protein means that um, having 13 mutations in a, in a variant cannot overwhelm the T cell response, which protects you from severe disease. And it's why we've been seeing in all the clinical vaccine trials and also in the real world effectiveness studies, strong protection against variants for hospitalization or death from COVID-19. This is a study that shows us that after mRNA vaccines, uh, the investigators here put the um, blood of those who had been vaccinated in a test tube with different variants. It was specifically the alpha, beta, and gamma variants. And the T cell response was completely preserved against all of these variants. And the AstraZeneca trial showed us that there are 87 T cells that line up across the spike protein. So against the beta variant, the T cells still work um, despite having uh, some of, um, mutant mutations across the spike protein. The next question is, do vaccines reduce transmission? Do vaccines reduce our ability as a vaccinated person to transmit the virus to others? And the short answer is yes. Now do remember that with SARS-CoV-2, the Achilles heel of this particular infection is that you can be asymptomatic and still spread it to others. It is why it's been so difficult to control. So the question from real world studies are, do vaccines prevent you not only from getting COVID-19 disease, but from getting COVID-19 asymptomatic infection, which would be correlated with your ability to transmit unknowingly. And there was always biological plausibility to think that these vaccines would block our ability to transmit to others. For example, the vaccines induce IgG and IgA immunity. Both of those are in high concentrations in the nasal mucosa. IgA is not the only uh, immunoglobulin that goes into the nasal mucosa. And so if you induce strong IgG and IgA responses, then you're protected from even nasal infection, which can lead you to spreading it to others. Is the other point is that in the macaque trials with, the, with primates, we know that when we give macaques um, actual virus inoculated into the nose, after vaccination, they are able to fight and not have high viral loads in their nose, which would block your ability to transmit. And we now have study after study after study uh, in healthcare workers, in the general population, in patients presenting to various medical settings that not only a symptomatic disease blocked by COVID-19 vaccination, but asymptomatic infection is blocked by COVID-19 vaccination. The largest study is really now published in the Lancet um, and it's yellow highlighted here from the Israeli uh, Ministry of Health that there's a 92 to 94% reduction in asymptomatic infection with the COVID-19 vaccines um, above and beyond symptomatic disease. That really leads us to know that this is, these are blocking transmission. And so the reason that the CDC in the US has said don't monitor for asymptomatic breakthroughs is that also multiple studies, many of them shown here on this slide, has shown us that if you swab someone's nose in their asymptomatic after vaccination, you may see with exposure to virus a little bit of viral replication, but immediately your immune system comes in, blocks that viral replication, and the viral load in the nose is extremely low. So a study from Catalonia, Spain, even before the vaccines in this Lancet trial in the upper left showed us that the predominant um, predictor of transmission is your viral load in your nose is monitored by the cycle threshold of a PCR test. And then these studies here show you that after vaccination, the viral load is reduced by fourfold or even lower. Um, this is the biggest study actually from um, the UK in the SIREN study that shows that the cycle threshold values of the PCR test after vaccination among asymptomatic healthcare workers 
uh, are so high that that means your viral load is so low in your nose that you can't transmit it, which is why the CDC has said don't monitor asymptomatic patients after vaccination. This is the strategy that the CDC recommends for monitoring breakthroughs, uh, asymptomatic uh, or after, uh, within 100 days of an infection. Don't screen because you can still have dead virus in your nose. Um, but screen and sequence people who are sick uh, and have symptoms of COVID-19 after vaccination. And at that point, do what's called the cycle threshold of the PCR to see if they can transmit. And then I'll end with how are vaccines working in real world settings, because I just told you that the clinical trial data is phenomenal in terms of these vaccines effectiveness, but importantly, so are the real world effectiveness studies. And these are studies that were performed after the vaccines were authorized in the real world, in the case of uh, times where circulating virus is still present. This is a study from the CDC across the United States from uh, December to March, 2021, where circulating virus was still present. And essentially when first line responders, healthcare workers after vaccination, you saw a massive reduction in the ability to get COVID-19. To put it simply, unvaccinated people, there was 161 COVID-19 infections among unvaccinated compared to one in a thousand for vaccinated. And many of those, uh, even one in a thousand were asymptomatic infections from routine swabbing. This is a study from the CDC that shows that the effectiveness is equally as good in older patients of these COVID-19 vaccines. Of those over 65 years old, there was a 94% protection from hospitalization, even with circulating virus in the community uh, among 65 and older. And then it's important to remember that we've even looked at age stratification up to 75 and 85 years old. This is a Lancet study from the Israeli campaign. And even despite variants circulating at the time from January 24th to April 3rd, this shows that the Pfizer vaccine is 95% effective overall for symptomatic COVID, 98% against hospitalizations, 97% effective against death, but 92% effective in asymptomatic infection. And importantly, this study actually looked at stratification by age, 65 to 75, 75 to 85, and the effectiveness was equally as good in older patients. And then finally, I told you that the CDC is keeping track only of severe symptomatic breakthroughs, and they're extremely rare. Out of 139 million Americans vaccinated uh, in, in this country, there's only been uh, 2,000 uh, 473 hospitalized breakthroughs, that's a rate of 0.002%. And there's a rate of only four in a million of COVID-19 deaths in those who've had a breakthrough infection. It's extremely rare. And we haven't seen breakthrough infections uh, transmitted, at least in contact tracing. So this really leads me to end with the fact that because T cells work across the variants or work across the spike protein at multiple points, even the alpha, beta, gamma, delta variant really do show that our T cells will provide strong, effective immunity against all of the variants. This is the Novavax study that's results were just published um, in a press release on June 14th. And this is the latest study we have of the latest vaccine. The reason this is important is it was done at a time of circulating variants and they were able in this study to sequence the circulating variants. This study, Novavax, the, the protein with an adjuvant showed 100% protection against severe and moderate disease, as we're used to saying, 90% protection against all symptomatic COVID, and importantly, 93% protection against all variants of concern uh, that were circulating at the time, and that included alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. Uh, so I'll end with the vaccine trials show us amazing uh, efficacy and safety, but importantly, so do the real world studies of vaccine real world effectiveness. They all reduce severe disease massively, they decrease transmission, variants can be managed, and importantly, uh, there are very rare safety concerns with these vaccines. So I'll end there. Thank you very much for your attention.